Hey, God bless you, my friend and sister Sharon. I'm so excited to give this exhortation. How is it possible for a follower in the 21st century to be holy? First, we must understand what it truly biblically means to be holy. Because the Bible tells us, my friends, and first Peter, this is what Peter said. And he wrote this letter, my friend. This was an epistle and the, uh, or letter. This is what he said. He said, be, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Now, this is 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 16. He's reminding us what God said, be holy. He also said this. But as he which has called you is holy, so be you holy in all manner of conversation. Now, I need you to follow me today, friends. I need you to loan me your ear for at least these 10 to 15 minutes. Because if you catch this, it's going to change your life. My friend, holiness is not something spooky. Holiness is not something that's not attainable. Because where the individual sets himself or herself apart because that's what it means to be holy. It means to be set apart. It means to be consecrated. It means to be dedicated. It means to be set apart. Follow me closely. Because Peter gives us some very important insight to how we become holy and how we get away from sin. Sin first must be understood. If you have any doubts, my friend, what will disqualify you from going to heaven? Paul wrote a letter to the church of Galatia and he told the Galatians, he said, listen, in chapter five, verse 17 through 21, every believer, every follower of Jesus should know what is regarded as the 17 works of the flesh. And these are listed in that chapter five. Listen, this is what Paul said. He said, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall we reap. So we find that in Galatians chapter five, because friends, if you don't know what sin is, you'll keep saying, well, we all sin. We all did. No, friend, you need to know what it is. You need to know what will disqualify you. Don't take it from nobody but that word that clearly gives you those 17 works of the flesh that you have to turn from. That's number one. But this is how you become holy, set apart for God's use. Listen to what Peter said. He goes on to say, he said, now this is uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. He said, wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation, the revealing of Jesus Christ as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust that you participated in your ignorance. Follow me. Once you know that pornography and, and, and uh, fornication, adultery, lying and stealing and using your body sexually and being provocative. Once you know that these things are wrong, friends, he's saying, now I need you to gird up, to tighten up that belt of truth. See, see what gets you to a place of, of dominance over the flesh man, over lust, my friend, is truth. If you are struggling with pornography, if you're struggling with uh, masturbation and fornication, if you're struggling with lying, if you're struggling with self-hatred, self-hatred, my friends, is manifest in depression. How do I know it's so? Because wherever you find a per person who is submerged in depression, the person that is primarily their meditation is them. And those that hurt them, offended them, made them upset. They become obsessed and focused on the earth. This is an earth suit. 
And when you put your mind on the earth, you will perish because Paul also told us in the book of Romans to be carnally minded, to be earthly minded is death. So when I get my mind removed from Christ and being spiritual and being God's servant and serving my fellow man. And I turn my mind towards the earth, towards another human being, another earth suit. When I put my mind on another earth suit, friends, I'm going to die spiritually because it's a violation of the kingdom. He does not want our focus on our pain, our problems, who did what, why they did it. Friends, you got to fight. You got to gird up your loins of your mind. You got to be willing daily to apprehend truth and meditate on it and think and and just squeeze your thoughts out daily towards what is good, pure and just because listen my friends once you understand what sin is he gave us the secret you got to gird up that mind listen to what else he told us he said and this is verse 24 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 24 for all flesh is as grass and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. Follow this, friends. What is Peter telling us? Peter is telling us anything we're lusting after. It's like the flowers hmm, that's growing up out the grass. They're going to perish. All of our lust for power, for control, for sex, for recognition, for people stroking our ego, whatever is our sinful habit. He's saying, let it go. Because it's going to be like the grass. It's going to wither. So so how is it that we become focused to be holy? It starts here. It starts here. Friends, if you are feeble-minded and you let anything just keep coming up in your mind and you won't fight, you won't, come on, you got to do what Paul said, throw down. You got to learn to Cast down these vain imaginations because watch this, my friends. Listen to what he said. This is Peter talking to us. He said, listen, this is 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11. Now he said this, dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. In other words, Peter is letting us know you are going to have to fight that there is no temptation that you face or myself or any other that's not common to man. But back up to chapter one, verse 24. He told us, excuse me, verse 15. He told us, where the secret to living separated, consecrated to God. Friends, you got to get your mind girded up. Once you set your mind apart from this world, you cannot do it, friend, if you still love secular hip-hop music and secular raunchy, um, uh, what they call reality shows and all that. Friends, you can't gird up. Come on, in other words, it's like gun up. <laughs> Come on, it's time to, to, you got to gun up. It's time to fight. You can't, you can't gird up your loins in truth if you still have the same worldly, lustful, provocative, perverse tongue friends. No friends, mm-mm. It's time to cut, cut, snip, snip some people because you can't gird up like that. To set yourself apart. And when we set ourselves apart, we set ourselves apart in four primary areas. Number one is time. You set yourself apart and say, I can't waste my time on frivolous entertainment and pastimes and activities. I can't do it. Friends, I'm a witness. If you want God's anointing for peace, Cause see, that's what we're really looking for, friends. Peace is it, it. It's the absence of war. I may be warring on the outside, 
but not on the inside because that's where Jesus anchors the soul. But until you make up your mind to gird up your mind and release yourself from ungodly music, people, clothing, attire, all of it, anything or anybody that's wasting your time. Because remember now, I want to be holy. I want to be set apart now. So in order for me to be set apart for God to use me, to talk to me, to teach me, to lead me, to guide me, I got to put you away because you wasting time. I can't hang out at the clubs. That's, that's just absolutely unequivocally unacceptable. If you live in holy, Mm-mm. I can't, can't spend $200 for a basketball ticket. I don't have time for that. That's frivolous. That's foolishness. That's a a throwing away of money. That's number two, my friends. Oh, you ain't serious about being holy till you set your money apart. Oh, we can tell by how and where you're spending your money if you are living holy. Remember that word holy means I'm living, I'm set apart for God only. My money, where I invest my money, where I donate my money, where I give it to the poor. Everything you do, my friend, you got to look at it through the lens. I'm doing this because I love God and I believe this is godly. This is what I'm investing in. And many of us must remember when we give to the poor, we lend to God. And this is why I keep trying to encourage many of you to get busy in your cities. Go find the homeless. Go find the mother with the, this walking down the street, strolling all them babies and start lending to God, giving to the poor. You should keep a money envelope on you at all times. If you got the extra money, throw 20s in envelopes and write a nice little note card and keep them on you, keep them near you. So at any moment you can be, watch this, led of the spirit to do these good works. Jesus went about doing good works. Amen. So when you're set apart like that, at any moment, you're subject to meet someone and that anointing where he will just sit right there. You'll know I got to put this card in her hand. Why? Because I'm set apart. My money set apart and my money is now dedicated to doing good. Amen. It's set apart. No, no longer. Watch this, my friend. Oh, I ain't got my shopping cart today because some of you You're not set apart in your money. You're still spending it on frivolous things. Hair, come on, $1,000 bags of European European hair. You still spending two, three hundred dollars on boots and shoes. You still st- spending all that money on designer handbags you don't need. You still spending money on furniture, knickknacks. Some of you, your money, you just you blow money eating out every day. You blowing 30, 40, 50 a day instead of going to the grocery store. You're you're not set apart because once you set yourself apart in this area of finance, my friend, I'm telling you, you'll be surprised how much we're blowing and wasting on me, 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 me. Just go in your checkbook, go into your debit and look at where you're spending your money, my friend, because you're not holy yet. You're not set apart because once you gird up your mind in the truth and the mind that's in Christ becomes a part of you, all you thinking about is your fellow man. Number two. So number one, your time, you, you consecrate it. I'm set apart. I don't have time to be going to all these, uh, quote, Christian events. Uh Uh-uh. Some of that is not of God at all, my friends. <laughs> you got to remember quietness and, and finding those still waters with God. That's how you get direction for your life, for your ministry, and to, to, to discern the will of God. You need a lot of quiet time. And some of you, you keep wasting time with people just socializing and eating. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> uh-uh. So time, money. My friends, and also some of you are not living holy with your money because you will not pay your bills on time. Then you keep incurring all of these uh, fees because you won't take care of your business. And then you're all stressed out because you got all these fees because you will not allow wisdom to gird you up so that I can pay my bills on time and give God glory. Amen. 
So, no, so number one is time. Number two is money. And you also set your body apart. I'm holy. That's why I don't wear swimming suits. That's why I don't walk no beaches. Because I'm holy. My eyes is holy. I set my eyes apart. That's why I can't be looking at my own body in my lace and my lingerie underneath all my spandex. I can't do that. I'm holy. My body is holy. And holy temples do not look like secular buildings. You are a moving temple and you are to set that body apart. And many of us, we are not holy in this area because our minds have not been girded up with the truth that when a man looks upon a woman or a woman looks upon a woman or a man and you lust in your heart, you are sinning. This is what Jesus said. And he said, it's better to pluck your eye out or cut your hand off than to allow them to run buck wild and cause you to keep sinning in your heart. Jesus said, it's better to enter hell and all maimed up than to go there with all your body parts. In other words, he's letting us know, friends, you got to do the work. So when you set your body apart and you say, I'm holy, that's why we wear the long skirts. That's why we wear oversized clothes a lot of times. It's not because we are trying to look like grandma, as some would say, which is not true. You can be classy. You can be looking like you belong to the kingdom of God and still present yourself in a way that looks so classy and ladylike besides looking like, as y'all say, a grandma. So you're not holy, friend, till you cover up your body, till you say, my breast, hips, and thighs do not belong to every man and woman I see. You don't get sneak peeks. I'm doing everything I can to cover up. This This, this, this is my treasure for my husband or my wife. Because some of you men, y'all playing games. Y'all wearing all these tight muscle shirts and showing all your tattoos and this foolishness with no shame. You not holy friend till you set that body apart. Till you say, yeah, I got pretty legs, but they ain't for you. These is God's legs and I'm covering them up. Yeah, I got a booty and I got some thigh, but it ain't for you, devil. This, this is consecrated. This body is set apart. Come on, come on, come on, friends. See, and, and watch this. You cannot apprehend God's peace until you turn from sin, till you turn away from these fleshly lusts. That's what Peter is telling us. Peter said this. He said, you watch this. Oh, friends, with this, listen, this is worth one more repeat. We got to get this. He said, dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. In other words, you just passing through here. We're not staying here, friends. <laughs> He said, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions. Trust me, friends. It's been many days Sister Sheridan went up in the shoe store and saw some scandal sandals. Some of them, you know, I love, listen, let, let me tell you something. Let's get this very clear. I got to find me a prop. Let's get this clear. Sister Sharon used to love her some sexy stilettos. Put them on in a New York minute. Oh, yeah. And back in the day, oh, yeah, I ain't going to go there. But let me let me be very clear. If you think that, I, so Sharon tempted all the time. I love shoes. I love sexy shoes from when I was a sinner woman. I am not. I am God's servant. I'm a child of God. But don't think that I don't war to put this stuff down just like you have to do, my friend. I war daily. All of us war. He telling you your flesh is going to lust against you. It's going to oppose you. That's why, my friends, you got to keep girding up your mind with truth that this is not of God. And though it may be lawful to me, it's not appropriate for me because I'm a woman of God. I, or for you, brother, I'm a man of God. You got to make that declaration. I am set apart. My body is not for common use. Because believe me, my sisters, when y'all go get your little toes done and your pedicures and you put your little sexy legs on up there and your scandal sandals, your stilettos, you know what you're doing. You're not set apart, precious. You're not holy, you're not set apart. You're no different than any other sister setting it out. It's just you're trying to set it out in the name of Jesus. 
But don't be deceived. God is not mocked. You can't be a seductress and go to heaven. It ain't going to happen. So what do we do to be holy? I got to get this thing in me. And all my lust and all my passions, it all, bam, bam. It, it keep, bam, hitting the truth. Bam, that ain't, no, mm. See, when you gird it up, when that lust come, that wall of the word, holiness. For without it, no man shall see God unless you are set apart and you are fit for his use only. You won't see him. The word of God says, for without it, no man shall see God. We have to set ourselves apart. Our money, our time, our dimes, our talents, it all belongs to him. And you're not going to manipulate. You're not going to steal it. You're not going to just do what you want with me because I'm holy. Come on, friend, tell yourself, I'm holy. I belong to God. And you're not going to look at me and lust for me. You ain't finna get no sneak peeks. Ain't none of that going down. I'm a holy woman. I'm set apart. I'm consecrated. And I'm concentrating on my Lord. Back it up. Come on. You got to make that declaration. And as I close this exhortation, my friend, last but not least, you have to set your mind apart because in order to apprehend the others, your time, your money, and your body suit and bring it under subjection, I got to get my mind on God. Friends, I have said this to you. I'm telling you, when you are not in this word, and I have several study Bibles. I love the word, my friends. I love it. I've loved it since I met him because I asked God, God, help me to love it. I want to understand it. See, the Bible says you have not because you ask not. Go asking daddy. Daddy, I want to love it. Help me to love it. Help me not to want it to preach and teach and tell people. Help me to love it because this is your word. And Peter said, the grass shall wither. The flowers are going to fade. Your lust are like flowers in the field. They're, it's, it's all going to fade. It's, listen, the wages of sin is always death. And that's why many of us are depressed. Because our mind is not holy. It's not set apart. We have not yielded our will. Paul said when he want to do good, evil is present. When he want to do good, his flesh be pulling. And Paul gave us the secret like Peter. He said, but I make my mind slave to Jesus Christ. Oh, friend, come on, come on. I'm giving you the secret to get out of your mess, to get out of your depression, to get out of your pain and your past. You got to put your mind on things above. I got a better one, my friends. You got to put your mind on this precious blood that Jesus shed for you and for me so we can be free. There was a song sang in the secular world, but my friend, it rings true. Free your mind and the rest shall follow. If you don't get your mind out of that situation and that thing you can't get out because Peter has just told us how to live holy you got to bring that flesh in subjection and you got to you got to learn daily to gird up oh yes I don't care what you going through. Stay under the word. If you if you're not in a space where you're reading and studying, you turn on this YouTube channel. It's over 200 videos just on my channel. Eat. But don't come away from girding up your mind, my friend. Oh, just gird up. Gird up and one day that light bulb and you going to say, "I got it. I got it. I'm free. I got it. I got it." But how can you get it, get it, get it? And if all you're doing is eating that hip hop, eating all that secular gossip, debauchery, and orgies that they call reality TV, that's all you eating. 
That's all you feed in your soul. And then you want to come and nibble over on the channels on YouTube, get a little word, go back, and then you keep on eating. Your primary diet is hip-hop music. You dousing your soul with all that, oh, friends. Come on. Say, my mind is holy. It is set apart for God. And when you get intrusive thoughts, you get nasty thoughts, you get mean thoughts, what do we do? Then you start learning to throw them down, cast down them thoughts. But I bring my body in subjection, and now my mind, I'm warring. Because Peter told us, that flesh war against your soul. So think it not strange. When you start warring, when that fine man, I'll never forget th about this time last year. So Sham was, woo, I was going through that, woo, I was going through the fire. And money was so funny, it wasn't even, it wasn't funny. <laughs> I know all about poverty, friend. I know all about pain. I know, I can tell you, I've been on the Via Della Rosa. The Via Della Rosa is the way of pain. It's the street that our Messiah walked and carried that cross. I know all about it. And while I was at work, this fine man stepped up on Sister Sharon. And he was fine. Smelling good. He was all my type. My flesh, man. It started warring. Because I was broke. And I was saying, God, I need... You know, we use this word breakthrough, but <clears throat> I didn't need a breakthrough. I just needed some money. <laughs> I said, God. He says, he says, Sharon. Well, first he asked my name. He came at me strong. He was a millionaire. So some of you don't know, I used to be a driver. I used to drive for Uber full time. I met all kind of people. I pull up to this. He was at work. And he told me he was a millionaire and he liked to do Uber. Why? He said he too busy to drive. He said, I don't have time to drive. I could get an Uber here as quick by the time I close down my computer. Just a busy millionaire, center man. He said, I want to take you out. I was like, oh. Ooh. <laughs> and I already know that he told me, I, I'm rich. What you need? He came that strong, friends. He was my type. I had to war. But my spirit man didn't. Because, friends, I don't walk too long with Jesus. I'm not giving over the booty. Not for no. Uh-uh. Not so sharing. Uh-uh. So sharing ain't giving up the booty, friend, for nobody. See, when God whoop your tail enough, you don't mess with that. Because that's all that would have came out to is a quick one night stand and maybe a $10,000 check. Because I would have had the brother pay me first. Believe that. But that's how people of power and people got money. That's how they roll. They'll tell you, I want to take you out. What do you need? He already knew if I'm a driver for Uber, I ain't got no money. I'm driving. Oh, he came strong. He came with the heat. I said, look, brother, I love God. I love God. I'm sorry. I don't date. And whatever I need, God, he takes care of me. But let me tell you, friends, you got to war sometimes. If you think temptation don't come, hmm. So when I'm going to say the devil, the devil, the devil. No, some things like... Peter told us, it's just temptation. It's flesh. Lusting. Warring. Come on. We throw it down. We think of the shed blood of our Lord and Savior. What would it have profit me to get me a little one night stand and a $10,000 check? Because that's what he asked. What did I need? That's what I would have told him. $10,000, write the check, let me run it and make sure it's clear where you want to go. Oh, because that's how we used to roll back. And when you in sin, friend, that's how you roll. You foolish, you stupid. You put your body out with a complete stranger. Foolishness. Now hear me. When you holy and you are set apart, don't think you're not going to be tested. Because Peter told us we would. But we war and we win because all the other parts are locked up. My money, 
my time, my body, and my mind belongs to God. So when the enemy comes in like a flood, you only getting so far with me because I got all my positions guarded. Come on, friends. It's time to be ye holy. Your body, your money, your time, your talents, it all must be set apart. You shall wage war and win. I am a witness. I love you, my friend. Till next time.